Hello guys, I'm Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net, improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher for the last episode of this guy. I look like totally nuts when I do this face right for the thumbnail. So the piece is Like Someone, which is the la very last piece in the Galbraith Comping book. This has been a series, if you did not follow, uh, in the past year or so, I've played every single one of those to use as a play along, sometimes for our students to figure out some of the fingerings, right? Because there's a CD with that guy, but there's no, uh, there's no real way to know the fingerings except what is written and sometimes there's typos so it's good to, to have someone play it on the screen i hope you guys have enjoyed it our last piece today is also played on a nylon string classical uh, because i preferred the tone of it and there is something more true to you know picking and, and really hammering in the finger uh, my thumb on the bass uh, like someone is from the song like someone in love of course it's a walking bass style so really quarter note, pa ting 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 kicking So I'll let you watch the video as usual, just watch the performance of it, far from perfect as usual, and then I'll be right back for some of the tips, technical advice and stuff like that. <laughs> enjoyed the performance of uh, Like Someone. Of course, as I told you, this is far from perfect. This is a one take type of thing. Well, actually maybe two or three takes to be to be brutally honest with myself. Um, I had the most trouble with the beginning of it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is fine. This guy's not even plugged in, I'm sorry, but here this is an E flat major seven chord and then we're going to a G7 like this, right? To me, it's the transition between this that caused me trouble the most. This is the most, <laughs> for me at least, the most challenging part of the piece. Um, so after this went, I think the, the rest went relatively well. Uh, this song is very well known, be careful, this is this and that and that. Descending bass line, descending bass line, descending bass line, etc. There's a lot of cliched walking bass, so when you, you look at bars one, uh, five and six and seven, so this is a two five one in the key of uh, e flat major, so F minor. There are other ways to do it, but this type of comping is, um, or this type of voice movement for guitar is very, very typical, very walking chord ish. Uh, although this is not a walking chord, this is a walking bass with chord punches. Uh, which brings me to my next point. The most challenging part I find for students, at least, is to not not get ahead of themselves. People will start playing this and actually rush a lot. So go, uh, especially say, I'll look at the third system down. So it's a C major seven. So, so when you just have these notes, it's easy to get, get sort of excited, right? And go uh, three and four. Then you're stuck with your new tempo because you you did not let the quarter notes ring as long as they should have and that that really makes you accelerate you you just pick up the pace pick up the tempo and then you're stuck at that faster speed and maybe you wonder why you can't play the rest of it so my advice for this is make sure you don't rush ahead play quarter notes and here the triplets underneath to avoid rushing right Triple a triple a triple a ticket, ding 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 ding, triple a triple, and that really really helps. Uh, and I mean players of all levels. Even uh, Pat Metini was interviewed at some point and said, you know, was asked 
what are you thinking about while you're improvising? And he's like, triplet, 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 just triplets going on in my mind. So we can latch on to this, uh, say this grid of subdivisions and then not uh, rush or, or uh, you know, be late, play too fast or too slow. So this is the most important lesson. Lesson number two, lesson number two actually is all these chord shapes, if you've been through this book, actually you should know all these shapes now because it's pretty stock common chords. You know, this is G minor, this is C7 sharp nine. All these things are not new. It's just the way that it's put together that might throw you off. Which brings me to my third and last point, probably. Um, there is, a, there is a, an, an easy time for you to create walking bass and it's to add uh, walking bass and adding chords, right? It's always to add this chord as an eighth note punch. So I'll give you an example. Say we have C major, and say the walking bass is just this, or C and G. It's easy to go like this. A one, two, a three, four. One and two, three, four. One and two. So it's one and two. So playing the chord uh, delayed by an eighth note is very common. It's pretty easy to do on the guitar. The lesson you, you well, that I, as an instructor and even as a player that I extract from this lesson is learn to anticipate your chords even when you do walking bass. This is extremely difficult because you have to play the chord and the first note of the walking bass of that chord happens later, an eighth note later. So I'll give you an example in uh, the sheet I'm looking at the book now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So end of bar eight, we're going, it's a two five in the key of A flat major. So we have B flat minor seven to E flat seven to an A flat major chord. Sorry, there's still landscaping outside here. Uh, not here, here, but neighbors. So bar seven goes like this. So you have to play the A flat chord before and then the A flat chord, you get three first notes of the scale. Do, 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 one, two, three, five, and then the the scale line for the bass is pretty easy. It's super simple, but it's to get it so your A flat chord, th this chord happens on the end of four, and then hitting this. So I'll do that bar slowly. Same for the D minor seven coming. G7. So the D, the A flat major, the D minor, and the G7 are all three anticipated by an eighth note. This can throw you off, uh, and I'm speaking from experience. So this is probably the biggest thing you have to be careful with. Is say you have a static walking bass, easy, right? And you just have to to put the chord. You can put the chord on the beat at the same time. That'd be a no-brainer. You get this on an A flat. Uh, on an A-flat chord later on in the piece, so you get... Uh, uh, that's the second time you see the A-flat, it's right on the beat, so you can have it on the beat, you can have it delayed, or you can have it anticipated. And gaining control over these three components will help you play better, like, walking bass and chord style on guitar. Cool. Uh, remember, you're not a bass player, so however hard you try, you'll never be able to play as good as a bass player, but this is just a, just a little trick you can have in your trick bag. Uh, before I let you go, congratulations. If you've learned all these pieces, like I know some of you students have put on Facebook and on YouTube, congratulations. Thank you for having been with me uh, on that journey. Of course, these videos stay online forever. Well, as long as, as, long as we don't destroy the earth. So uh, please feel free to come back, re-examine Shiny, the first piece, and uh, sto uh, not Shiny Stocking, the, the other ones. Uh, shiny is the first one, then wind, then the blues in F, and blues in 12 keys was great. I segmented into three parts. Also, if you want to work on walking bass, I'll bring your attention to the part of the book at the last where you get these, uh, page 37, you get the walking bass that are on the recording that the bass player played, but they've been written in treble clef. So if you want to work on your reading, you can read a whole bunch of quarter notes for guitar. I do recommend that you, you do like me, and these are kind of oddly spaced. So what I do is I always put a line every four bars. I don't know if you'll see this on camera. So that, say that's the beginning of the piece. 
one, two, three, four, and then after four bars, I, I put, I pencil in marks so I know kind of where I, I am in the form, and it helps you, you know, where you are. And also, that's so fun because they did it for all the pieces with the bass player. So if you have a fellow guitarist, you can play along. So you're walking bass, you're not doing walking bass and chord, but still your friend can play the chord stuff and you can play the bass stuff and you guys can play together without the recording. On that note, it's Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Signing off with, um, I think my French accent is, my French accent is bigger today. Is it just me? Anyways, I'll see you soon on the website. All right, take care.